What's up guys, welcome back. I've been meaning to put this video out for a while, but I finally got some time. So what happened to the Cybertruck from Moab? If you don't know, this is what happened at Moab and the full video will be linked below. I sent the Cybertruck off a, about a four foot dune and it was completely an accident. We we're out having a great time out in Moab. With that, we got a forward impact. Nothing set off the airbags, but we got a forward impact and then the back end slammed. Well, on front impact, the truck did shift up a little bit. So the brackets bent a little, which kind of shifted everything. The cross member did bend on us and um, the front fascia also got all busted up, the front plastics. That shifted. It broke my CFM, the radiator, the cooling fan module. So it broke the mounts for that. That shifted up into my wet side HVAC. And that's most of the damage that happened on the front end. Coming to the back side, the air spring module. So the shock, the rear right shock. The mounts ended up breaking on the air spring module. And you have a hole in the top of the casting for the airlines to run into and with that hole the air shock kind of mounts right around the rim of the hole and it shifted right up into the casting the mount ended up chipping away a little bit of the casting lip i guess and it cracked it a little bit i have talked to a couple of people and the fix on that should be a doubler plate and some structural adhesive. It'd still be safe and it's, we're just gonna band-aid it. How am I getting these parts? Well, I reached out to Pensacola Tesla and I tried to get parts from them and said, hey, can I order parts from you? And they said they, they will not do over-the-counter parts, which, I mean, I don't agree with. I don't know why they won't do that. Um, they said this is a collision. And so they referred me to a collision center um, the guys at the collision center were really nice. I took the truck out there to get it looked at. They looked at it. They were supposed to be writing me up a quote. And that ended up running into a dead end when they told me that their quoting software isn't up to date enough to give me a quote on labor for the Cybertruck. Can you not do it the old way? Um, I'm pretty sure the service manual has labor hours on the teardowns, but because their software doesn't have it, they can't quote me. So Tesla was no help here in my area. The collision center is no help in my area. So the next thing I have, people in the Tesla community that are more than happy and willing to help me out. So a huge thank you to those guys. I really appreciate your offers. A couple of them are on the other side of the country and it makes it a kind of a pain to ship these larger and heavier items all the way down to Florida. But I did find someone that was willing to help me that's only six hours away. So all my parts, I'm ordering it through them. It's the OEM price, uh, nothing is inflated on that. And we'll kind of go down into the parts breakdown now. Um, windshield repair is $2,100 roughly. The CFM is about $515. The Wet side HVAC is probably my most expensive single part, which is $2,300. So the front bumper is gonna cost me $1,200. We have the air spring module, and that is gonna run me right around $950 if I remember correctly. Um, and then obviously like the bolts and the mounts and stuff like that. Um, and I'm just gonna do DIY all of it myself. So it's all pretty doable. I might run into some issues with the front end when I was taking the CFM apart to look at the damage. There's this thing called a lockout whenever you're doing certain repairs and it keeps the truck from running its own uh, processes. When I took that CFM out, um, I ended up expiring that lockout. I had to go run and do some errands. The truck woke up and started pumping radiator fluid all over the ground. The cyber truck does not like, and I think this is pretty much all Teslas, but they don't like anything wrong with their thermal management. They don't like the motors getting hot. They don't like the batteries getting hot. They don't like the electronics. So when I dumped all that coolant, uh, thermal management was all messed up. 
Okay, so there it is. That's what I was looking for. We should have all kinds of warnings now. But here they are. It's power reduced, low voltage system, rear axle steering disabled. Did a bunch of air purges, got the truck back to being happy with the temperatures. Uh, so that checks out and we're good there. When we get back into that, it might be a headache, but we'll tackle it whenever I replace that CFM. Shouldn't be a big issue. And then one last thing, probably about two weeks after Moab, um, on the road, the Cybertruck decided, I let a buddy test drive it and we weren't doing anything crazy. Uh, he accelerated and the half shaft came loose and just started free spinning. Get it back to my house. Um, I ended up taking the truck apart. I found out that the bolt was loose. It was literally hand tight diving into it a little bit more i end up pulling the hub off and i see that the half shaft has actually stripped i think all that started from the initial wobbly tire vibrations made that bolt come loose and then over the time of doing everything else it came became very loose and you can have your own opinions on that that's what i think it is I haven't asked Tesla to replace anything else that I know for sure was my problem or my fault. But I did ask Tesla to replace the half shaft in the knuckle in the hub. Initially, they weren't about it. They said, no, we're not going to do it. I posted it up on X and the next day I got a message and Pensacola is going to cover it under basic warranty. So that's really cool. I am really thankful and happy that Pensacola did reverse their decision on that. Whether it was forced or they did it on their own, I don't know and I don't really care. I do want to say thank you for uh, reversing that and deciding to replace my half shaft in my hub. So outside of that, I do have uh, a lot of my parts are still on order. Three, probably four of my parts are in right now. My, the biggest one, which is my right rear spring is not in, it hasn't shipped yet. It said it was on back order. So still waiting for that to ship. Before I can get anything else fixed, I gotta get my spring back in. Before I can get the half shaft and any of that fixed, that way I can put the truck on a trailer and get it up to Pensacola for the half shaft stuff. So yeah guys, so that's pretty much what happened. But I appreciate you watching my videos. I'll keep bringing some more teardown stuff. Hit that like and subscribe guys, I appreciate it. Till next time.